Yo, BJ Gador here, and we have a little uh, live podcast today on YouTube. Today I'm talking performance training, and what I want to also mention too is I'll take a Q&A towards the end of the episode here, so if you want to drop in any questions or comments in the comment section, I will get to it towards the end of the episode, but I wanted to uh, share what we're working on this quarter for my Gorilla Corn Gains members. We've closed the program for the rest of the year, but we will open it back up obviously for uh, 2022. I'm just trying to situate the camera here. Oh, shit. Sorry, it's been, it's been a wild start to the morning here. I'll just go like this. Okay. Um, we've got some construction going on at the house. I, I tried to do it at the hotel, but then I forgot something. So anyway, we're in it right now. Um, performance podcast. I want to talk about performance training, how it's different from other styles of training that we do. Uh, and whether you are a Gorilla Corn Gains member or not, you'll learn more about the difference between kind of a metabolic workout or maybe more of a bodybuilding workout or a general fitness workout versus what is true performance training. And ultimately, the, the big shift is you're focusing on accomplishing something specific with, with a measurable goal, right? So if you want to increase your pull-ups, you can't do a pull-up at all, and you want to do your first pull-up, this is your opportunity to kind of focus on that for a set period of time. Typically, it is between, you know, um, you know, to do anything significant, it takes about six to 12 weeks. Sometimes you focus on something for a full year based on where you're at, but we're doing right now what's called a 12 week specialization plan. And we're focusing on four specific exercises. Number one is the single leg squat, the pull up, the dip, and the one arm push up. And all year, by the way, we've been working on building up towards this. So the way I structure our Gorilla Corn Gains training, we do uh, in Q1, it's Origins. And that is, and I have products available, by the way, at the dailybeecher.com that are standalone products. The, uh, for both Origins, Shred, and Gains, three unique three month transformation programs with complete follow along workouts are live at the dailybeecher.com. But within our, uh, our 2022 program this year, at the time recording this podcast, we still kind of run that schedule. Origins, foundations, going back to the basics, laying the foundation for the entire year. It's always good to return to that every single year to, you know, review the basics. Uh, you, you never, you're never beyond the basics, no matter how advanced you get. So that's really important to understand. And then we go into Q2, which is shred. So we go more metabolic conditioning style of workouts, you know, circuits, fat loss, fat loss style of training. And people like that, obviously, because you get lean for summer. So that's the main focus for that particular block of time. And then in Q3, we do gains. And that is where we shift from kind of the metabolic conditioning style, which is alternating sets of non-competitive exercises, uh, geared more towards getting your heart rate up and burning as many calories as possible to metabolic bodybuilding stacks or competitive groupings where we're pairing uh, like, for example, uh, following uh, dips with push-ups or following pull-ups with rows to spend more time on a particular body zone, flood it with blood and nutrients and spur muscle gain with, while using lighter loads. So that's the benefit of a lot of these stacks because my audience, home gym, home fitness, you know, we don't have access to a lot of weights or a lot of different styles of weights typically. You know, many of my members have a pair of dumbbells or a couple pairs, like a light and a heavy, or ideally a light, medium and heavy. But you can still make a lot of improvements when you know how to structure these workouts properly if you're looking for muscle gain. So it doesn't have to be load. It can be time and retention focus. You can stack uh, competitive exercises, but it's a very different style of training than fat loss training. Fat loss training, you feel more of a systemic effect. Your heart rate's up. It, it's really full body. With our metabolic bodybuilding workouts, you know, it's very localized, right? So if you're working on a stack for your biceps, you're, you're feeling it right here. And there's more of a mind muscle connection focus. And you're, you're again, it, it's, uh, you may not get as much of a heart rate elevation, but it, it is more of a muscle building effect when you are doing that particular protocol. But then in Q4 performance, we're going after something specific like these goals. And because of the way we structure our program, we're going after more body weight focus exercises and you know, the way I look at it too, uh, when you look at uh, achieving a goal, right? The fewer movements, the better. You know, we're focusing on four this time, but you know, technically you'll get the best results if you focus on a single exercise. 
you know, and for some people that's running, you know, they're trying to do a marathon or they're trying to do a 4K or they're, they're getting ready for a mud run and that has a, collect, uh, a collection of feats they have to prepare for. And, uh, but everybody's different. But I love ending the year with some specialization work because it allows you to, let me just shift this a little bit. It allows you to see, you know, true performance gains. With a lot of other styles of workouts, you don't really know, uh, you don't know necessarily how much you're improving. You can tell, oh, I feel better. I have more energy, I have more stamina. I can do this exercise for longer. I can do this harder exercise variation. But you, you don't know if you're making true progress. Uh, as much as you will when you say, okay, I can do four push-ups now, I'm gonna try to get to, uh, I'm gonna try to double it by the end of the year. So what we've done is we've set up, um, you know, and, and we've approached this before with two styles in the past. One, and by the way, those jumping in, ask questions and, and put it in the comments now, I'm gonna get towards it to the end of the, my, my talk here about performance training. You know, um, we, structured it initially with what's called the EHO style. Uh, it's a, something I've trademarked. Uh, EHO means every hour on the hour. And essentially what you're doing is, uh, and this worked really well during the pandemic because people were at home. So they, uh, they had the focus and they had the ability to kind of, if we're working on pull-ups uh, like we did in some years past, uh, you could jump on your door pull-up bar and you could bang out X number of sets you know, every hour to kind of get to your totals. Versus doing them all at once, uh, I, you know, peppering them across the day is excellent. Um, but we had a lot of people now kind of going back to work, and maybe the EHO style wasn't as accessible as it was during our, our pandemic situation. So what we've done is I set up a, a new plan, which is uh, it's a four day split, two upper, two lower, and we focus on all four of those exercises over the course of the week. And then based on where you're at, like how many reps you can do right now, there's a specialized protocol that is phased and progressive over the course of the 12 weeks. So if you can only do, if you can do zero reps right now, you're following a specific 12 week program. And I basically set up, so there are about six columns. There's a zero reps, one to two, three to five, four to six. Uh, I believe, no, I'm so three to five, six to eight, 10 to 12 and 15 plus. And then there's a particular set rep parameter you're following and we start submaximal, but as the program progresses, we keep adding more overall reps to each session so that by the end of the 12 weeks, you're doing, like in some cases, we've had people um, double their reps with this uh, approach, or uh, we've had I have one guy, multiple years, has done back-to-back -back 20 plus pull-ups. The second time he did it, uh, he did it with even better form. And uh, so you, you, you basically just kind of boil a frog, so to speak. So initially it kind of starts easy. We're, and this isn't super challenging to me, uh, but then by the time you get to kind of halfway into the program, you kind of start treading water because the volume approaches a level where, you know, you might start to reach failure towards uh, the second half of the program. Uh, but it, it's an excellent style and approach and we, we've used it time and time again. I'll be running more specialization programs, by the way, to allow you, uh, for those that aren't current Gorilla Corn Game members, because again, we've closed that out, uh, you can maybe jump into something like that maybe next year, or maybe I'll offer it as a product. But I wanted to talk about how you set up a performance workout. And you know the way that you want to approach it is, there is uh, some key sections. One, massage. Then we go into mobility, then we go into activation, then we go into our actual specialization work. Then there's some optional supplemental work, and then you can do some finishers. And it's a really great flow. It, it's, it, again, it's unique in the sense that uh, you know, performance workouts tend to not be as exciting for a lot of people. You know, like a lot of people love circuit style, right? You jump in, I'm gonna do a 10 exercise circuit, I'm done in 20 minutes. That's kind of what we do at Express. You know, we, at Express we have, uh, every month you get six 20 minute workouts that you cycle between on a bi-weekly. Every two weeks you cycle through them, so you'll repeat each workout once. And then the next month you get some new workouts and the way we've done it this year is that it actually gets more challenging They've gotten more challenging month to month as you build and progress. But um, there also are three of the workouts are body weight. The other three will use uh, dumbbells, uh, balls, indoor bands, you know. Uh, so it kind of mix it up. But it's all home gym friendly stuff. But those workouts, you're in and out. And, you know, um, you get about 80% of what you're looking for in, in terms of, you know, being lean, uh, functional muscle mass, more of an athletic look. You're not going to be huge. You're not going to be jacked. You're not going to be super strong. 
but you're going to have a very good variety of oh, it's total fitness, overall fitness, right? Where, which is what most busy parents and professionals are looking for. Uh, and again, so with Gorilla Core and Gains, again, we tend to have more intermediate advanced trainees and uh, they, they, they're comfortable doing, you know, longer 40 to 60 minute sessions. And, but even within that, you know, this protocol is unique to many of our members because, um, you know, you're not trying to, like with fat loss, you're trying to get the burn. With muscle gain, you're trying to get the pump. With this, uh, though you will get an excellent pump with some of these workouts, uh, you know, again, it's, it's specific to increasing performance. So why would you start with massage? And, you know, the biggest thing, so what I like about when you do upper lower too, because you can, if you're doing upper body workout, you just have to focus on massaging uh, the upper body. A massage can take a lot of time. It's usually the first thing people cut in their training. Uh, they don't like doing it. It's, you know, it can be uncomfortable, but especially as you get older and when you're doing some dedicated specialization work where the volume, volume meaning how much, uh, what's the overall set rep total, right? So if you're doing five sets of 10, the overall volume of that was 50 reps. Um, so when you do that type of stuff, you can get a lot of soreness and especially over time, you can start to get excessive tightness and roping and knotting in the muscles which will eventually contribute to some, you know, potentially chronic or acute joint pain. So the massage relaxes the tissues, it smooths them out. You now, for example, if we're about to do, uh, you know, pull-ups, uh, key muscles involved in pull-ups are your lats, your rear delt, uh, and, and you, you tend to have some tightness in the biceps, some traps. So kind of massaging some of those areas can prevent, for example, your, your tight traps from taking over on the pull-up and getting bad form and, and shrugging too much versus pulling your lats down, right? And if you are sore in your lats, you know, sending some blood in there through the massage technique, relaxing those muscles, because that's a lot of what it does too. It actually relaxes the muscles and uh, allows them to, you know, better function during the main workout. But, you know, and ideally you would heat. Like if you could jump in a sauna or a hot tub or... Um, apply heat on an area before we massage it, you get the best results. Uh, if you're doing a single leg squat, right, what are we looking at? We're trying to uh, massage the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, maybe the calves and the shins, because that'll help not only uh, prevent injury um, and help warm you up, but, and, and by the way, you do it in off days too if you can, but it's going to help on the subsequent mobility work because when you relax the muscles, it allows them to go through a more full range of motion. So, you set the clock for 10 minutes and you try to get as much of the massage work as you can done in that 10 minute block. And then you go on to the next section, which is mobility. So now you have relaxed the muscles. Uh, you're also kind of aware too, like you get on the foam roll on your lats, like, wow, this, this might be a tough day for me because my, my lats are really, really sore. Uh, so it kind of gets you an idea of, you know, what's to come or maybe what you haven't been doing enough of. It's kind of like a body screen. But the mobility section is just designed to take the specific muscles you're about to work. So right, if you're about to work the push-up, what, what joints are involved? Uh, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. So I could work on doing you know, a variety of wrist mobility drills. I could work on uh, mobilizing my pec, uh, stretching my chest, uh, doing some downward dogs, which I love to do to help mobilize upper body, You know, where you go from a, a push-up position to kind of hinging back to mobilize the shoulders, um, and uh, it, it just, it's very specific to what you're about to do. It's a specialized style of warm up. And um, you know, that, that's the next section. So you do the massage, you do the mobility. And again, you, you don't have to do it like, a lot of times what happens is people get overwhelmed. Like I, I could, wh which one should I do? Pick one or two mobility drills that are gonna help you be more effective when you start doing your work sets. And for most people, when it comes to the push up, they got to mobilize the wrists. And again, I think you could do some wrist mobility and then go right into uh, five to 10 reps of uh, some down dog work and that can get you rocking. Uh, the next section we go is more activation. So that is kind of a, so now we have, uh, we've warmed the muscles up, we've relaxed the muscles. We now go into, we did uh, some joint mobility work and now you can set the clock for another 10 minutes. And now we use some specific activation drills that are gonna help you for the specialization work, which is the exact movement you're trying to focus on. Whether in this case, we're doing the one arm push up, the dip, the pull up, the single leg squat. And again, those jumping in late, you can ask questions in the comments. I will get to questions at the end once I'm done with this kind of, just giving some, a quick kind of primer on performance training. And uh, in, in the activation section, you know, what we'll do a lot with upper body stuff is scapular shrug work. So in the case of the push-up, 
we're working on getting motion through the scapula protraction to activate your serratus anterior muscles because that is such an important muscle for shoulder health and performance and getting that warm and active will allow for really smooth, clean, flawless reps on your push-ups. And we do shrugs with pull-ups, we do shrugs with rows, overhead shrugs. It's just basically straight arm work where we're isolating the scapular movement to kind of get you warm. But it could also be things like, you know, because we're, we're, and oftentimes on our upper body workouts, we'll superset a push and a pull. So, uh, you know, you can, we'll do like pair dips and pull-ups, uh, and uh, we're doing pull-ups twice a week right now. Um, I'm asking people to use a different grip on, on a different day to kind of give that variety. But uh, we'll do band pull-aparts, uh, band face pulls. All these drills, by the way, there's videos at, 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 the, at my YouTube channel here, those listening live on YouTube, you can check out and reference, especially in that Fit Over 40 video where it's like the 40 main exercises that we focus on on a regular basis. But, um, you know, we just kind of work in... Uh, we're doing sets of shrugs, some band pull-aparts and band face pulls, just getting blood to the areas we're about to work and also some corrective work, right? So a lot of times we're at the desk all day and we're rounded up and we have tightness in the chest and, and, and our upper back is weak and we're trying to activate those key areas like the low mid trap and, uh, you know, and getting some blood into those areas so that, you know, the next, when you start your first work set, you're ready to go. And then before you even get into the specialization work, you can, if you'd like, do some, um, you know, an additional one or two warm up of the actual movement, like a band assisted pull up or uh, a self assisted dip, you know. But, uh, you know, from there we get right into the specialization work. And again, that's very specific to how many reps you can do. Uh, without having to get into our specialized plans, for those listening, obviously, that aren't members, uh, one of the best places to start is you, you, you take how many reps you can currently do and you start by doing sets of, let's say, 25 to 50% of, of, of that max. So if you can do 10 push-ups, you know, one of the ways to increase that total uh, rapidly and safely is to start by doing lots of sets of three. And, uh, and then maybe in a week you go to four, and then the next week you go to five. And then ideally you want to get to the point where something you could just do once for 10 reps, you can do multiple sets for 10. And that's what then allows you to dramatically boost your rep total. And uh, so, you know, that's just a, a kind of a, a great tip. Like, even if you're just trying to improve, uh, you want to take the rest of the year and say, you know what, I can only do three pull-ups. I'd like to be able to get to six. You know, maybe start with um, doing, you know, five sets a day of just a single and then bump up to doubles and then triples. Try to do sets of four. Uh, and then even, you know, th that could be a program you build up to and then until you're doing like multiple sets of your previous one set max and then you've got a shot of really getting more repetition. So just an idea of how to approach it. Uh, the best strength work is, is, is submaximal, high focus and high frequency, especially with body weight training. So uh, just kind of letting you know on that. But typically what we'll do in the specialization work, again, we're typically supersetting. So, um, you know, in the case of doing a single leg squat, you do your left leg and your right leg. And I, you know, that tends to be all I'd like people to focus on there. Because again, uh, the more moves you put into a workout, the less, uh, less focus for each move. So I try to limit it to one or two exercises uh, in the case like, you know, a pairing, supersetting a dip and a push up, And then um, in the case of a unilateral training, because unilateral training is so taxing, I just kind of keep it left leg, right leg. Because if you think about it, five sets per side is 10 total sets. And when you do a lot of single sided work, it's very taxing on your stabilizers, your balance, your nervous system. So, um, and, and you, it takes about 20 minutes and I typically like people to do about three to five sets. And, um, and again, initially, the way a proper structured program is, you're not hitting failure in, your, in the early weeks of the plan. You're avoiding it, right? We start with submaximal sets, right? So you can do 10. You would at least, you probably would start no higher than five reps per set. But you would do, let's say, five of them. So it's 25 total reps. And then when you do sets of six, five sets of six, that's 30 total reps. You can see how the volume accumulates. And again, so you're trying to get greater overall volume from week to week, which will allow you over time to end up doing more reps in a single set. But you don't want to be doing failure right out of the gate because, again, you're going you're to kind of burn out on that type of plan very quick. The next section you would do is kind of supplemental, right? So what, what muscles are involved in an exercise you're specializing in, right? So if you want to get better at the pull-up, what muscles are involved in the pull-up? 
Well, you've got your forearms, you've got your biceps, you've got your brachialis, which is right between the biceps and triceps, you've got your lats, you've got your rear delts, you've got your upper mid back. So you could pick uh, one or two movements and maybe do a couple sets of 10 to 15 reps to get better at those. So it could be some curls, it could be some uh, straight arm lat pull downs, it could be some uh, maybe some additional face pulls or some re reverse flies. These are just, uh, I look at it as kind of an extra helping. I don't worry about bumping the weight up on these movements because you know, especially as you get more fit every week, the specialization work and a properly structured plan where the volume is increasing week to week and kind of that boil the frog approach. And what I mean by boil the frog is if you go too hard, too fast, you immediately get overwhelmed. But if you are progressing in such a manner where, uh, you know, your body can barely tell before you know it, 12 weeks later, holy shit, I can do, I can do things I've never done before but it does take the proper kind of snowball effect that you're looking for versus like every set is failure. Do, you know, you just, you can't train that way. Even people on drugs can't train that way, especially in, in we, we're, we're all natural trainees here and uh, we gotta be, and we have a lot of people over 40, so we gotta be particularly cognizant um, or we gotta pay particular attention to, you know, we don't have the ability to recover like we did when we were young. So uh, we are really trying to avoid failure, especially in the first three to six weeks of the plan. Um, unless you are strategically overreaching, uh, which is a separate thing. I can, maybe I'll talk about later, but, uh, so supplemental, you know, uh, you want to get better at people that aren't doing body weights. You want to get better at your bench press, you know, stuff for the front delts and the triceps could be a great finisher. So some front raises and some tricep pushdowns. It's a classic power lifter approach. Uh, you know, and, and then the, the final section is, is a finisher. Maybe, maybe you want to do some, a quick metabolic finisher, right? So you, you don't get as much of a, you got a great pump from this upper body workout, but you know, like may, maybe you want to get a little bit of a cardio uh, burn going and maybe you do some swings or uh, 10 swings every minute on the minute, hundred reps in 10 minutes. And it's a great cardio metabolic workout that really hits your whole body. Or you want to do a superset of an upper and lower body movement for 10 minutes and get a great metabolic conditioning workout. Uh, a lot of times what we like to do is, you know, 10 minutes of step ups or lunges continuously at a good pace for 10 minutes after a lower body session. It could be sled work, uh, but the finisher is kind of like dessert, you know, whatever you want to do to finish off your workout. And, you know, the way that workout is structured, you know, you can get these workouts done in about 60 to 90 minutes. But for a lot of people, you know, that's kind of a, a non-starter because they only have 20 minutes to train. So that's what I, I like people to be aware of. Like uh, the performance training is very strength focused and classic strength training isn't as fun. It's more methodical, it's more structured, and uh, it requires more extensive warm-ups. Part of the reason why I just, I don't advocate barbell squats, and there's lots of reasons, but one of them is that, especially as you get stronger, it takes a good 30 minutes just to warm up for, properly warm up for a squat workout so you're not risking injury. With a barbell on your back, I mean, you gotta do a lot of stuff, especially as you get older. And, and a lot of people literally have like 20 to 30 minutes, so my express workouts have a built-in warm-up. They use tools that, kind of don't require uh, non-risky movements, like a band pull apart, you can get right into that. Barbell squat, not so much, right? And body weight movements tend to be easier to jump into for the most part, and you can always start at a slower pace and speed up, but people don't have time for these extended warmups, but if you wanna get really good at a particular exercise and perform well, you absolutely have to do extended warmups and cool downs. But now we're talking about taking a session you can get done in 20 to 30 minutes or less, and now it's taking about 60 to 90 minutes. And uh, so I just want you to be aware of the difference between kind of, you know, those circuit style, like in, in the shorts I share on YouTube, right? Or the reels on Instagram, you know, these, uh, these circuits or, that we set up are complexes where you can do these in 20 minutes. They're awesome. They're great for general fitness and they don't require a lot of extensive warming up and cooling down. Not that I don't still recommend you would do it, but you know, it, it's just, it, it's, it's express fitness, right? but you're never gonna probably find yourself doing incredible feats of performance. And, and uh, the cool down is not just to get you in a position where you can um, you know, cool down from the workout, but it, it immediately starts the recovery process. And, uh, but a lot of us will actually do that just on an off day. An off day could mean, like for, for me in this plan, I'm doing four days a week, two up or two lower, uh, focusing on the pull up, the dip, the one arm push up and the single leg squat. And then on when, and that's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesdays and Saturdays, I do sled work. I do work in the pool and I box. So it, it's a way for me to kind of get a good sweat 
um, stimulate my aerobic system, but it's not as taxing as you know um, the other workouts, and it's just kind of good complementary stuff that I do to the other workouts. So that's kind of uh, the performance training. I want to get in some questions now. Uh, I know we had a bunch come through, so let me pop in here. Let's see, all messages visible. So I will start at... We had uh, Mr. Hanky Panky from Sweden. Great to see you, BJ. Uh, great to see you, man. Or, or lady, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't clear which one. Let me see here. Uh, I wish it would stay up. Someone asked, uh, well, that Hanky Panky also asked, uh, cool down to avoid injuries and recovery. Exactly. So it's a combination, but, um, and, and again, people that want to skip the first sections, the right, the mobility massage and activation, you're going to, you're going to start the workout kind of cold and it's not going to work out as well for you. And you're going to, you are going to be, especially as things get intense, you know, um, you're going to be risking some injury, which we don't want. Rough Jen, is this, uh, Jen Avocado? I think she does call me Funky Unky. Uncle Baby Biscuits. Uh, great to see you, Jen. Hope everything is going great at HBO Max. By the way, House of Dragons, um, been really, uh, it's been a great buildup, and the penultimate episode was fantastic, so I'm really pumped for the season finale coming up. Shout out to HBO Max. <laughs> Not sponsored. Should be, though. Um, Canada, Farat Al. Greenway Fitness, how we doing? Uh, Ra Raul Rodriguez asks, uh, thoughts on straight arm retraction, band pull, strictly for retraction, muscles, rhomboids, uh, mid traps, etc. Yeah, I mentioned uh, we do a lot of band pull-aparts and uh, pull-aparts are taking a band like this, single band and, and coming across the chest. And then, excuse me, face pulls, we are pulling like this. And uh, those are two great corrective shoulder exercises. You can also reference that in the Fit Over 40 video as well. I'm sweating because, uh, by the way, if you heard some noise, we simultaneously had our AC go down and also um, the water heater. So uh, it's, it, it's, you know, I live in the desert, so it gets pretty warm in the house here. Uh, not as bad as it was even a week ago, but when it was like 100 in the house, that it, it was really testing our resolve. So let's see here. We got... Um, Raul says, uh, thank you for the massage tip. I mean, look, it, it, it's one of those things. And we can use a foam roller. You can use, um, the way I look at massage, I, I, there's four, let's talk about massage briefly. There's uh, four main implements that I, that I mix between. I guess five now. Let me, let me just, uh, I'll just talk about them. Uh, I use a foam roller, and I use the foam roller for bigger muscle groups or just to do an area, because you, you can cover a lot of surface area fast. But if I was just foam rolling my quad and I found that my middle quad was a little more tender, I then would go with the softball or lacrosse ball and I would then kind of dig into it and you get more pressure per square inch and you kind of look at it. I always use a, a, a painting a wall analogy. So if you want to get as much of the wall done as possible, use a big brush. And then at the end, you take a little brush and you kind of fine tune and get the spots you missed, the corners. Uh, and uh, that's how I look at a foam roller versus a... Uh, lacrosse ball or a softball to dig into your to your tissues. I do a lot of self massage with my hands. So when I warm up for, um, you know, I'll just take some lotion. I use BJ's Body Butter available at sleepswellseparately.com, and I'll start to strip my forearms. Just strip, strip, strip. And I'll work on wrist mobility too, and it can dig in, and, and it actually warms up your hands, improves dexterity and, and mobility in the hands. But it also kind of you can feel when a muscle is kind of dehydrated or ropey. Um, in a way that you can't when you're just jumping on an implement like a foam roller. I, t I like to use the percussion massager for certain areas. Like uh, I really like it for the, the, the arms, the biceps, triceps. There's a lot of uh, nerves that run through your arms. So you get neurotension. If you walk dogs and they pull her, you also develop a lot of neurotension in the arms. So this can help um, digging into those. And uh, But I really like it for the, the neck, the traps, the arms, the upper mid back, especially if you have a partner uh, – your partner or spouse or friend or whatever, I mean, if you're a massage buddy, they can dig into the borders of your scapula. I like that a lot. I also like a scraping tool. I've been doing a lot of scraping lately on my quads, particularly my outer quad, because I have a history of just um, knee injuries when I was young, and I have a little bit of outer quad dominance, and um, really helps kind of break up that tissue in the fascia. 
but uh, it, it, it's, it's worth it. And again, like the way to approach it is um, the, each section gets you ready for the next section. So sometimes it's hard. You know, I, I do a lot of my training at the end of a long day. And it's like, by the way, like, I don't remember the last workout I did that I'm like, I can't wait to do this workout. I, that doesn't, I don't, I don't, I don't really enjoy training if I'm being honest, cause I'm always, uh, I'm working on fitness all day. I've been doing it for so long. Um, it's just something that I have to get done. It's a job to me. I've got to get it done. Uh, that, that's how I think a lot of people need to approach this stuff is that, you know, it's not, it's not, yeah, you would like it to be fun, but in most cases, you're going to be low on energy. You're going to be tired. You're going to be stressed, but you got to find a way to get it in. So, um, starting with some massage mobility activation just gives me enough time, you know, uh, and this is especially important as you get older to kind of just get your mind warmed up to get, you know, focused on the training. Because when you, when you do performance training, it's all about focus. Like when you're doing a circuit, you know, you can just kind of go through the motions, bang it out and get a great workout. But when you're trying to actually improve on an exercise, uh, it, it's very neurological. So you have to have laser focus. So a lot of times I can't just start with that focus. I have, I have to kind of ramp up to it. What else we got here? I'm looking at the live chat. I just saw Richard. Uh, let me go Richard. See, I remember we got a express member here. Let me see. Where is it? Tr trying to drop extra weight. Big fan of the boxing workouts in short term. To lose weight with adding boxing workouts two days a week, not allow for proper rest. So if you're if you're saying I want to do my three main workouts Monday, Wednesday, Friday as usual as an express member, uh, would it be better? To, uh, would I get better results by doing more on the off days? Um, possibly, but the thing is that it's there's too much crossover because we do we do boxing on um, many of the workouts. I, I think I think if anything the boxing won't be as competitive. Like the biggest thing I don't want you to do is do more metabolic workouts. Like, you know, don't add any, um, circuits on those off days, right? Cause you know, we do those, it, it, it's not like classic strength training, but it's, it's metabolic resistance training. So it's still going to be, you can't do too much of it. It's going to wear you down and make it tough to recover. And, uh, you may burn more calories, but you end up finding that like, instead of having three great workouts a week, you have like five or six okay or shoddy workouts because you're constantly fatigued. So, I mean, the, the way I look at accelerating fat loss, if you're doing three full body workouts a week, the first place to look is your diet. What can you clean up there? Maybe employ some carb cycling, which means uh, in, in this case, you, you have uh, maybe you have starches and fruits on training days, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then on your off days or more fat loss focused days, it's just protein and produce and, and uh, just veggies, no, no fruit and no starch. And uh, that's a way to accelerate your fat loss. Doing uh, long walks or hikes, you know, um, is another way to just get, uh, help your recovery, burn some extra calories that's non-fatiguing or that's not gonna take away from your next workout. So, um, but I mean, you could experiment with adding uh, one or two uh, boxing specific workouts uh, on, on the off days. Just again, uh, you know, just consider that, you know, adding extra exercise won't be as effective as tightening up your diet. And, and when in doubt, in terms of finding a more sustainable approach, you know, I just know from experience doing this for a long time, most people can't commit to doing more than three workouts a week long-term. You might have spurts of time where you can commit to five to six workouts, but my whole thing is if it's not sustainable, it's questionable. And whatever gets you to a goal, if you aren't willing to continue to do that, right? If you're not willing to continue to work out for six workouts a week forever, it's probably not worth committing to that even for a set period of time because you will end up, um, you know, like you go back to three workouts a week, you might lose some results. You might gain some weight back. So you just got to be, you know, you know, smart about, I don't like focusing on weight loss much or how people look, because again, a lot of that is just baked in the cake. You know, like <laughs> there's only so much you can do with your own genetics. Again, especially as you get older and especially if you have a full-time job, you've got kids. So I like to keep the focus on more important things, you know, like mobility, um, feeling good, having energy, uh, getting good blood work results when you go see the doctor because you're, you're exercising regularly. Um, so, you know, I hope that answers your question. What else we got?
Thoughts on the Rolga foam roller? I'm not familiar with that. Let's see what we got here. So yeah, I mean, if you want, if someone's asking about implementing some strength workout mixed with Express, you could try it. Um, just, you know, be cognizant that, I mean, one or two days at most, um, it's going to be tough to recover. Um, but, you know, if, if you can make it work with three Express workouts and then doing some strength training from someone else, um, whatever works for you guys works for me. Last couple questions here. Let's see. Sorry, guys, I got to scroll through this. How important is it to work through full range of motion? I mean, it's, so I'm not saying, you know, nothing wrong with doing some, some partial repetitions um, occasionally, but the gold standard for every exercise you do should be full range of motion. And then if you implement something else, it, it's a variation or, or, or a supplemental work, you know? So, and it, there's debates. Some people say never go more than 90 degree angles. Uh, some people say always go, you know, ass to grass or chest to bar in the pull-up. To me, range of motion is very in individualized. Uh, most important thing is it's what's pain-free. For some people, they can do a press and come all the way to the chest. For other people, um, looks like we have some porn stuff coming through. Best adult dating. If anyone looking for porn or Tinder connections, someone just came through with four comments in a row. So we got, we got a, a, a spam bot <laughs> coming through on YouTube Live here. But, um, but some people with shoulder issues might need to do a floor press where you only go down to about halfway and it kind of minimizes the motion. Some people will uh, be able to do pistol squats because they have no history of knee pain. Some people with history of knee pain or really tight ankles and hips have to do one leg box squats and a higher box step and decrease the range of motion. So, uh, but in general, you do wanna go through as full a range of motion as possible with your exercises, add in some partial range of motion stuff. Like one thing we're doing in our specialization work is there's some partial single leg squats on a slant board uh, as part of the, uh, the warm up stuff that you can do. Um, to help send blood to the knee, activate the lower quads, and, and um, make make you more comfortable when you get into your main single leg squat work. So, um, you know, and there's there's things like 21s, right, where you do, uh, you know, seven reps here, seven reps in the bottom half, seven reps in the top rep, and seven full range reps, you know, and that's a great metabolic uh, bodybuilding stack you can use. So, you know, but, I, I don't like to work in absolutes, you know, like typically I don't recommend putting a heavy weight in your back and going ass to grass because a lot of people will end up butt winking or rounding their lumbar spines and you can get bulging herniated discs that way. And for most people going, you get most of the benefits of movement going to about top thigh parallel or hip crease, uh, just beneath knee crease. Any lower for most people is probably not smart unless they're pursuing ass to grass uh, and that, that's what they want to do. But you know, again, I look at what, what ranges of motion get you most of the benefits from the exercise, what's safe for most people, and then you got to take your individual anatomy and goals into the equation. Uh, Jeremy Gleaves, a gorilla corn. What are my plans for next year? So right now we're busily trying to set up our 2023, uh, you know, offerings and schedule. Uh, I'm trying to continue with gorilla corn in some fashion. Um, I was hoping to get uh, we use Vimeo as part of our, uh, at thedailybj.com as our site app. It's a mobile app and a desktop service. And we're hoping to have membership tiers available so that I could make the Gorilla Corn option like a top tier. And uh, my, my thoughts on that, I'll, I'll, I'll hold on talking price until we have something final. But um, I was hoping to do that because it allowed me to organize the content better uh, with products, which is what Gorilla Corn Gains was this year. Um, all the content gets populated and I can't really change how it's organized. It's just that that's what I'm working with within Vimeo. So our plan is to continue it. I'd like to make it uh, the, the highest tier membership option at the dailybeecher.com. If not, uh, we might have to do products again or I have to figure out what that's going to look like. Calvin's asking about uh, a podcast on detailing journey with weight loss and, and, and my body. Um, so we, I have a podcast called Get Some Gains. It's on iTunes, Spotify. I've done so many podcasts on diet, exercise. I did one recently on top 10 weight loss tips. Um, so you'll find a lot of stuff there um, about that. Um, 
I guess I, I, I could end up doing another one at some point on it as well. Um, I guess I, I try to focus more on answering questions or topics that people might want to look at. I don't, to me, it's like I'm, I'm the most boring person in the world. There's really nothing to talk about. Uh, I don't find myself very interesting, but um, I, I, will, I guess I can find a way to talk about that more. Um, it, it's just, it's kind of a broad topic. I, I don't really know, you know, uh, specifically what to speak about. Like what, what, what are your specific questions about it? I, I can try to answer it here while, while we're still live. Let me see uh, what else we got. Jeremy, I hope that answered your question. Uh, we're going to try to continue with it in some way, um, hopefully as part of a membership. Let me see here. What else we got? Scrolling through. That's just about everything. Podcast on weight loss in the body. I mean, it, it's... How, how could I make a, a short answer to that? You know, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, I, I had mentioned earlier about the sustainability factor. And, you know, th th that's what's really tough with this. Uh, what, let me see, I got one here that I can answer quick. Uh, physically demanding job, sometimes I'm already physically exhausted from work and uh, from work, but still worn out. I mean, that's that's the whole thing, isn't it? Like. So how do you incorporate training? Uh, look, doing work at the end, a workout at the end of the day is brutal because you're, you're, you're never going to be like, you're always going to be zapped. And again, especially if you're older. So um, a commitment to getting it done first thing in the morning. And again, because the difficulty with training first thing in the morning is it takes your body about an hour to kind of get with it, like your spine, for example, when you wake up, it's dehydrated. It's actually the, the first hour of the day, you're at the greatest risk of spinal in, in an injury. And uh, so you, you definitely wanna take the time. So if you wanna train at seven, I'd recommend waking up at six, getting some water, maybe putting on a podcast or some music to kind of get you in the flow. Um, you know, and then taking the time to, to massage, do some mobility, uh, do some hangs on the bar to help you know, re release the spine a bit and get some decompression obviously the hydrating component and, uh, and then getting into your workout. But the thing is it sucks. You're never going to be optimized working out right away in the morning, especially super early. I got some people to wake up at like four shout out to Chris Scarpati, a gorilla corn. He wakes up at four. I, I want, I don't even think I would train if I had, if I, my schedule was that crazy where I had to wake up at four, I don't know if I, how much working out I would do, or maybe I would just do work at working out in the weekend when I didn't have to wake up so early. Um, Cause it's just, it's kind of just miserable. Um, and you, you also might have to adjust your style of training because if you, if you have to wake up early in the morning and get your workouts in, uh, and you got to get right into it, you know, you've got to, you've got to really, uh, be honest with yourself. Like maybe I can't do the heavy lifting I used to do because I don't have the time to warm up for it, to do it safely. Maybe I've got to more, go more to body, body weight circuit style of training where I can actually get the workouts done in 20 minutes. Um, and, or maybe you, you take the approach as I'm going to do some really short, fast workouts, like 10 to 20 minutes, first thing waking up during the week. And then maybe I do one or two uh, longer workouts on the weekend when I have more time and energy. But um, when it comes to working out at the end of the day, you know, a lot of times what I'll do too is I have these plan B workouts or alternate workouts. Uh, I'm not using them right now because of the specialization work, but typically, you know, other times of the year where I'm like, man, the last thing I want to do is that workout. I just don't have the focus for it. I go into like single move workouts. Like I'll go and I'll lunch. I'll lunch for time, 10, 20 plus minutes. Same thing with step ups or sled, or I'll set the clock for 20 minutes and just hit the heavy bag. And just, I start slow, you know, jabs, crosses, hooks. And then maybe by the end, I'm, I'm doing really fast, explosive combinations, but you've got to find these workouts you can just kind of slip into. Uh, because it just you, you've got limited resources, you've got limited energy. Your body can only take so much stress, and it's all stress. Diet is stressful. Training is stressful. Work is stressful. Relationships are stressful. What's going on in the world is stressful. It's all stress. So if you have a really bad day, <laughs> the last thing you're gonna and you're tired, the last thing you want to do is specialization work for single arm push-ups and squats. In most cases, uh, now. I, a lot of days I just, I have to find the willpower and it's basically all will. I mean, I, every workout for me is like, 
you go into it and it's like, ah, last thing I want to fucking do right now. But you know, you start to think there's a lot of people missing limbs. A lot of people that would love, that are injured, that would love to move pain free. So you can't take it for granted. And I always try to remember that. I also use my, my own people to keep me accountable. Like, you know, like I said, uh, my express members who do three workouts a week, 52 weeks a year. You know, um, I, I think about them when I don't want to train because I know a lot of them still get it in and they've got just as busy of schedule. So, and I don't have kids. So um, running multiple businesses is tough, <laughs> very tough, very taxing. But, um, you know, you, you just you, you, you kind of find the motivation from other people. Uh, it's great to have a community, too, because, you know, everybody's going through it. There's support and accountability built into it. But I guess those are my top tips. You might have to adjust your style of training. The, the bro style, if you're doing bro style stuff where it's like, I'm going to do one body part for an hour or two. Um, those days, like unless you're in college and you're young or you're a bodybuilder who makes a living off of it and most of them don't, you know, you might have to just go to more uh, really short focus, 10 to 20 minute full body workouts with minimal equipment. So hope, hopefully that helped. What else we got? Okay, that's a decent question. Um, Calvin, so here, here's, here's how I can answer that. Where am I with, with my body and my relationship to it? So obviously many of you know, um, I guess many of you don't know, I, I probably don't do a good enough job of talking about it. Like I know some people, it's once some, someone has lost weight, that's all they talk about. I mean, like the reality is uh, I spent the first half of my life, I'm 40 now, first 20 years I was overweight. Uh, the second 20, um, has been an evolution of trying to get in better shape every year and just be leaner year round. So, um, you know, a lot of it starts with insecurity. You know, a lot of people get into fitness because they're insecure. They have their own body transformation. They want to help other people do it. Um, for me, obviously I, I grew up very insecure about my weight. I used to get made fun of for it. Um, and was always kind of a bigger person. So, um, but I will say I never, was more critical of my body than I, when I was at men's health. And then some people like they would look at the way I looked when I was at men's health as kind of, you know, a very good shape or peak condition. But I was very insecure about more insecure than ever because I had thousands of people, you know, people go on, they, they, they're just trying to find your weaknesses. Oh, your calves are small or what's wrong with your abs. Your abs are uneven or they're shaped weird. Um, so like people become super critical of your body in ways you never would even think about. And then it makes you hyper aware and hyper focused on it. And it's always the least important thing. Because again, I, I don't mean to be like negative or like um, in the sense like you can't really change your body that much. But I mean, you can. But the amount of effort it takes, for most people, the juice isn't worth the, the squeeze. And again, there's, there's huge genetic limitations and um, it gets harder and harder the older you get. That's why I like to keep the focus on what's most important, which is, you know, do you want to be in a wheelchair? You know, do you want to spend the second half of your life in pain? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of us have parents or grandparents and you see the decline and it hurts to watch. Like they can't move. They've got a cane or they're, you know, they're dealing with bed sores because they have to spend so much day, time in, the, in bed or they have just debilitating lower back pain. And even the simplest of things like getting in out of a chair become like a maximum effort scenario. So I, w I will say like, you know, I, I focus in my career, I focus the least on my body now. You know, I still like to look a certain way. Uh, it's good for self-esteem. You know, I'm trying to sell clothes. We have a fashion line at CecilSeparately.com. Um, you know, I like, you know, I, but I'm not like, I'm not obsessed with it. Um, you know, at some point you got to get comfortable, comfortable in your own skin. I mean, I, I will say over the last couple of years as I had approached coming to 40, uh, I kind of looked at things. I'm like, you know what? I, I have to, I have to really look at, how I can, I can get more longevity out of this. Because one thing I've noticed getting old, I don't have the same amount of energy or motivation. Like things that pulled me when I was younger, right? Like uh, for a lot of, when you're young, it's like getting laid, looking great, uh, ego. I don't give a shit anymore. Um, I don't really care about getting compliments. Uh, I, I, I prefer not to get insulted, but I don't need compliments about my body anymore. I, whatever, it is what it is. Uh, my main focus is, can I show the movements to you guys properly through a full range of motion, right? And, and uh, to do that, I don't have to use 100s, I can use 25s. 
and, and or use my body weights. So that's my, my most important thing is I, I don't want to be in pain. Um, I want to be able to do this long enough to support my family. Um, I will say the moment I don't have to do this anymore, you'll probably never see me again. <laughs> Once I'm set financially, if that ever happens, um, because I'm not, I'm not a public figure. I, I, if I am, I am, but I'm not. I, I am a very, uh, I guess you can call me a recluse. Uncle Baby Biscuits likes to be alone. I, I, have a very, I like to keep a very small inner circle of people that I, I, I don't trust easy. And uh, uh, I don't have time for a lot of friendships or relationships because of how much work. We work all day in the business. And uh, it's kind of nonstop and I got to maintain the physique and the fitness at the same time. So um, if you're asking about, I have a better relationship with it. I'm not, um, like I'm okay with uh, not being, like I could be more shredded. You would say, I could get to the point where like, I don't do, uh, I'm definitely, um, I'm looser with my diet than I probably should be, but I also love to eat. So I've got, a, I've got, and, my, and so does my wife. So I don't want to be, um, I, at any time I wanted, I could get super shredded. But a lot of times it comes at a cost of, of for me, mood swings, being super irritable, uh, not having enough energy to train, uh, not being able to energize or, or with my content. I've also just, I've battled mental health issues the last couple of years, um, too, which has made me take uh, a whole new perspective on stuff, uh, what's important, what matters. Um, so yeah, I, I li I'd like to, uh, it's important, I think, for my job to look like I'm in shape, uh, but, you know, I, I think what, what uh, an in-shape body looks like is very subjective, and hopefully, um, Roberto says, I'll miss you when you disappear. I appreciate that, Roberto. Uh, I, I still got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. And uh, just in, in full transparency too, man, fitness. I've been in the fitness game since uh, 2004, 2005, and it, it, this is the hardest it's ever been. I think the collective burnout, depression, anxiety, angst from the pandemic, um, sadly uh, push people out of their fitness routine maybe forever. They may might never get back on track. Um, and it's been, people just aren't interested in it. I, you know, I, I, I've tried to share some of the best, I think I've shared in some cases some of the best content I've shared in the last couple of years. Very little engagement, people don't really seem to give a shit. Um, it makes you question everything, like am I, am I good at what I do? Uh, you know, but, but at the same time people's interests change and, and when, when Inflation is going crazy. People are struggling. They've lost their job. They've changed careers. Um, they're dealing with health problems. Fitness becomes um, not very important. You know, the, the priorities change. So going back to the original question, I am in a better place with my body. Um, I, there's always room for improvement. You know, like I, the little extra, I, there's maybe a little extra stuff around the, the love handle or, or low abs that I could get rid of if I was tighter with my diet. Right now, um, you know, I'm okay with just being, I don't know what you call it, in good enough shape or in good or great shape versus like, I don't know if it's a leader world class, but I'm also 40, you know, like I'm not, I'm old. So, I mean, it's, I gotta be happy with the fact that I can do most things and uh, I can still make improvements. And um, it's kind of a long way of answering that question. But yeah, I mean, it's, I, I had body dysmorphia, like literally where I thought like, it's, it's a picture of me shredded and I'm like, I feel like I looked fat. It can really fuck with you. And that's why, again, like, if you're going about this in terms of your looks, you will always lose because there will always be something you don't like about your body. And, and getting to the point where, I, I, what, what do I like about my body? Well, I like the fact that it, it's, it's generally proportional. I like the fact that um, there's good symmetry, there's balance. I train my full body. I'm not just an upper body monster. I've, uh, you know, you can, my calves will always be smaller, but it is what it is. Um, you know, like, that's just, I can't, I can't change my lower leg genetics. Um, but, you know, like, so that's what I mean. It's like, I, I, I focus on controlling what I can and, and making it sustainable. And um, at the same time too, it's harder for me at 40 to try to keep up with, people that are in their twenties with this, that, you know, many of them taking drugs and, and pushing the limit that way. I've never done that. Um, and, uh, technically now would be the time because I don't have the same recovery ability that I had when I was younger, but I, I've always kept it natural. And I, I, you know, like not saying that it's wrong for people to look at like, 
hormone replacement therapy, if that is recommended by a doctor and you're working with a medical professional. But, um, you know, it's, I always like to lead by example. And, um, you know, the, the body you see or the product I deliver, it's through the training methods I use. Um, so, you know, it, it's, there's an authenticity to it. And it's all based on what I've been given. It's God given, you know, uh, and I've just tried to maximize what, what that is within reason. Someone says, stop body shaming your calves. You know what? I actually like my calves. I've got nice, thin, feminine ankles. <laughs> and uh, there's a good shape to them. And, and I've got quick feet. Uh, part of that is because I don't have too much mass down there. I actually get my feet up nice and quick. So again, pros and cons. The other day, I shared something for a neck training. And someone's like, your neck is really small. I'm like, well, I think you're overlooking how big my head is in relation. So it makes my neck look small. But... Uh, let me see here. I know I saw one good one here that body knowledge says I use a cane, but still train as hard as I can. No excuse unless there are reasons. I'm, I'm a recluse as well. So fellow recluse and, um, you know, like I said, uh, much respect, right? Because a lot of people, the moment that they have an excuse to not do some of this stuff, they will. Um, so I always have extra respect for uh, people that, you know, have limitations, right? And again, I've got my own set of limitations. Um, I, but when I was 20, the doctor told me like, this knee is done. Like you should never run squat or lunge again. Uh, cause there's really no cartilage left. And I had so much damage to it from football, but what am I going to do? I'm not certainly not going to get it replaced. Uh, and I spent the next 20 years, like finding a way to be able to do these movements. And, and in that process, by the way, I learned a ton. I learned how to find ways when you have pain to work around the pain or find uh, pain-free substitutes. But at some point too, like, I'm like, you know, I do also want to try to, you know, I, I want to be able to, to do some sprinting. I want to be able to do um, some single leg squatting without pain. And, and just, you get better and better at finding the regressions you need to bridge the gap, the stepping stone movements you need to get to that point. And then if there are some things that, that just are forever out of reach, you know what? Um, focus on the moves you can do and get the most out of them. Someone said, I'm glad I stopped competing in bodybuilding. Um, yeah, bodybuilding's tough, man. Bodybuilding, no one bodybuilds without ever, like when you, if, you're, if you bodybuild, especially competitively, I don't know how you don't develop an eating disorder or some form of body dysmorphia because, um, you know, like you, you go between a different mirror and you look like you can look totally different. The lighting changes everything, right? Or a certain day, you're holding more water than another day. Like, it, it just, it's such a mind fuck. And um, that's why, you know, again, like, what most people are looking for, um, you know, they like to see some muscle definition, some separation between the muscle groups. Um, like to have a general level of strength so they can do a lot of movements. Uh, if they're active outside of the gym or work, uh, you know, they want to be able to perform well at those events like Frisbee or golf or pick up basketball. Uh, and then again, you, you want good blood work. You want to be healthy. So, you know, th th those are always the best places to look at. Um, and, and motivations do change as you get older. We've got about a minute left here. Uh, from Zambia. Shout out to Z Zambia. Man, I, I appreciate that. Basically, he said, I, I, you know, he or she said, I wish you the best with your business. Uh, thank you. We're working hard, man. Uh, we're doing everything we can. Um, kids are waking up. Have, have a great weekend. Um, you know, that, that's part of it too is, you know, I, I, I hate mentioning it too because like there are people, a lot of people going through worse times. And I think what, what's going to happen right now for the, and I have a lot of trainers that follow and listen. Um, we're being tested right now as an industry. You know, we really are. And I probably should do a podcast on this because, I mean, the number of people I knew who had thriving fitness businesses, uh, multiple gyms, hundreds of members were living the life of their dreams. Some of them are completely out of the business. Someone I heard the other day just bought a lumber yard. He's out of the business. He had multiple gyms, hundreds of members, killing it. Uh, and then the pandemic hit. So it, it's, it's sad because uh, anyone who gets into it besides like those, you know, true like online gimmick marketers, they do want to help people. It is a business, but they want to help people. They do. I know this. So um, it's sad that they're now not able to do it because in order to, to help people, you have to, you have to make money because we all need to make money to survive. You know, I, a lot of us would do this for free. 
if I didn't, if, if I would do this for free probably if I didn't have to worry about the mortgage or uh, retirement. Oh good, the, the porn's coming through again. They must have this like on a set timer, like every 10 minutes. I don't, I don't know how they do it, it's crazy. Uh, Cause it can't, it can't be a person. I mean, how can a person just jump on lives all day? Anyway, I don't know, maybe they do. What the hell was I even talking about? Oh yeah, um, so you just gotta keep sharpening the, sh the sword, always be ready for the next opportunity. And to understand too that there's just going to be good days and bad days. And uh, on the bad days, you got to remember the big picture. Like, it's just a bad day. I have to tell myself that all the time. Had one yesterday. Felt like shit all day. Super deflated. Uh, felt like a lot of my efforts weren't um, helping or being realized to the goals we had. But you know what? I'm, I'm breathing. I can walk. I can move. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got a beautiful dog. Uh, I've got a pool. You know, um, so on the outside looking into someone else, that you know, life is life is good. So um, it's it's just very difficult not to get caught into because we're all in these bubbles now. A lot of us don't leave the house. A lot of us um, work remotely. Um, everything's been changed since uh, 2020. So it's a new normal, and um, I don't know if fitness will ever be what it was before the pandemic. And a lot of people are going to be leaving the industry. And the ones that remain, I guess, the, the cream rises to the top. Let me make sure I didn't miss any final questions here. Uh, Edward said he, he started working out to lose weight, but now he's kind of fallen in love with the process. Uh, he still has weight to lose. You know, dude, it, 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 it takes a long time. Because again, it's not just about like anyone can lose the weight, right? You go to the biggest loser ranch, you take <laughs> diuretics and fat burners and you work out six hours a day and you have chefs and you have trainers yelling at you. Yeah, you can get great results. Not realistic. And you got to get comfortable in your own skin. Some people are just heavier builds, bigger boned, heavier people. They're never going to see their abs. Okay. Even if they took drugs and got surgery, they might not see their abs. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, I know that the industry is, is focused on uh, whatever, it's a magazine cover look, whatever else, but, um, and then there's, you know, there's body positivity now and all this stuff. I don't know what you want to call it, but really just get comfortable um, in your own skin. Again, focusing on compliance, getting X number of workouts in a week, eating well at nine out of 10 meals, um, feeling good, doing more push-ups getting more range of motion in your hips so you don't have back pain. You know, these are the things that truly matter and, and these are the things you have control over. Um, we look the way we look, you know, and, and we, can, we can improve it, but um, improving it to the extent that you can sustain it is also important. And, and at the same time too, you know, like, whatever. I, 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 don't, I don't wanna talk too much. But yeah, no, it's tough. And I, I feel for a lot of uh, trainers right now going through it, man. Like, um, I'll share stuff that like four years ago would have would have like crushed or would have gotten a lot of engagement. And now it just seems like, you know, people just, I don't know what it is, but we got to, I got to keep showing up just like you do. And you're going to have days at work where people don't want to listen to what you have to say or things get tough. Keep showing up, man. You keep showing up. Eventually the last person in the room, I've kind of, I've lived by that for uh, most of my career. And I try to remind myself of that uh, as much as possible, especially right now because of how hard it is to motivate people. And because uh, motivation is cyclical, right? Like if people are like excited about stuff, you get more motivated to make stuff. But when people are like, mm, I don't give a shit, it, it gets really tough to get up, to make stuff and to try to, you know, so um, wham, 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 but we'll figure it out. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I'll try to do more lives and Q and A's and stuff. And I, I thought it'd be nice to kind of start with a topic, uh, kind of like podcast style and then, you know, Q and A at the end. So if you like this, let me know. Uh, and maybe we'll keep it going. All right, love you guys, peace. I, wait, I think there was one more. I saw one more from a gorilla corn. I always like to, you know, make sure that I get those in. Where is it? Roberto, concerned about fat gain for Q4. Uh, why are you concerned about it? What's, what specifically are you worried about? 
let me, um, I guess I'll, I'll try to answer it quick. Um, the workouts are not as cardiovascular. Uh, if you do some boxing, walk, run, uh, or sled work on off days, on a, like Wednesday and, and, and Friday, you should be good to go. And again, uh, the, the fat gain is more diet related, right? So you're gonna have to be very careful with the holidays. We're entering the stretch right now where a lot of people start to gain weight. They, get, they just get loose. It's a high stress time, they get loose. And uh, you know, things start sneaking in, the extra calories start creeping in. So uh, it's more of just uh, trying to focus on, you know, staying consistent with the workouts. If you want to do some metabolic finishers, you can, but you're also going to be gaining, I mean, this performance stuff, will you'll gain size and strength. So, uh, which will help increase your metabolism, which means you burn more calories at rest. So what I would say is, uh, don't worry about it. As long as your diet is tight, you should be good. Doing some, any of the boxing workouts or walk run stuff we did, or any combination of that on maybe Wednesday and Saturday will help you stay lean. And then um, if you want, and you can make that finisher something more metabolic. Uh, and you can you can pull it from any of the metabolic stuff uh, I share. Uh, you wanna say hello? Molly. Say hello. She's got a, I don't know if you guys have seen my videos, but we do, we do tug of war on the land and she does it in the water too. It gets pretty intense. She has a killer grip. All right, guys. Have a beautiful weekend. I hope this helped, and uh, I'll try to keep more good content coming your way. Much love. Peace.